G'day, welcome. Of the videos I've made, this is probably the most important, and that is because we're talking about all-cause mortality. Now, all-cause mortality is recorded by a lot of governments around the world. It's a weekly record of how many people died, and doesn't actually say why they died, it's just the fact that they died. And that could be a car accident, that could be cancer, heart attack, it could be sickness. So to start this video, I'm going to just tell you my sources. Our data source again today is COVID-19 Data Portal, which is the Department of Internal Affairs source. I'm also going to refer to the paper by Professor John Gibson, and he comes to some very interesting conclusions. Then I'll be going to the Human Mortality Database, and uh, that will show some quite remarkable um, results. Okay, so let's get into it. The first graph I've got here is of um, uh, all-cause mortality from the 17th of February 2019 all the way through to uh, the 2nd of uh, January 2022. Now, this brown part of the graph here is the nine-month vaccine rollout period, and that's what I'll be mostly talking about. Um, so to get an idea of the numbers of deaths that happened during this period, as you can see there, there's quite a big slug of deaths there, which is also similar to the slug of deaths there, but I'll get to that in a minute. The first thing I did was compare with the exactly the same time in the previous year, which is just down here. These are the dates there that I've uh, looked at, and the result is this. There are 1,199 more deaths than the same period in 2020. 1,999 more deaths than the same period in 2020, this period here. And there was no flu season here or here. So the question is, why were there 2,000 extra deaths in this nine months? The other thing I did was compare it with this flu season over here. 2019 was quite a serious flu season, it seems. Um, and so there's a lot of similarity between these two castles, so to speak. But this one is still larger. It's larger by 50 more deaths. So there were 50 more deaths here when there was no flu than there was over here when there was flu. And again, the question is, why? The second thing I did was to compare the time immediately before the nine-month vaccine rollout, and that's the green in the middle of the graph here. And I compared that with the same period here um, the year before. And the difference is 1,195 fewer deaths than the same period in 2019. And again, no flu here, but there probably was significant flu here. 1,000 fewer deaths. So it's like a bucket, really. This is one side of the bucket, goes down to the bottom and up the other side. And the bottom is 1,000 less deaths. And then you go up the other side, 2,000 more deaths. So why were there more deaths here when there were less deaths there? So the next thing I did was to um, uh, compare bar graphs with some of this data. So if you can see in the previous year here, it's quite low um, death rates over the years. Um, and then we've got three years here in, in red that were quite high. And you can see here when the vaccine rollout happened. And you can see here that the actual deaths on the young people wasn't that great. But then when you get to the older ages, 60 to 79, there's a significant number of deaths. And if you step up again to the 80s plus, uh, there's a huge number of deaths. So there are a lot of 60 plus deaths. And again, the question is why? The next thing I did was to compare seasons. So you've got the blues here are all the winters for the years, uh, and these three reds are also winters, and these two blues are winters as well. And you can see that these three uh, winters were more severe than all the previous winters. But again, this winter was very similar to these three winters. These three winters probably had a lot of flu. This winter had no flu. Again, why the extra deaths? And that's as you can see down there, the rollout uh, period. And over here, and this is a six month period, remember, so there's 1,702 deaths, 1,702 extra deaths. And if you go for nine months, it was about 2,000, as I mentioned before. And again, you can see the 60 plus is 1,526. So most of those winter deaths were 60 plus. And just to show that uh, the flu wasn't a factor, is here in blue you can see um, the coughs and, and fevers uh, graph and this is a database that I actually take part in. It's flu tracking and influenza-like illness symptoms tracking. 
Um, and you can see in blue that there was very little uh, in 2020 and again very little in 2021 but if you're comparing the green up here the 2019 year was there was significantly more flu around and coughs and sniffles and that sort of thing so you, you get, it's quite clear according to this blue here that there wasn't much in the way of flus and fevers in 2020 or 21 for that matter so again the question is why the extra deaths Okay, so what I want to do now is to look at a paper that uh, was produced by someone in New Zealand. This is a professor, a professor of economics, I think, in the University of Waikato in, um, in the North Island of New Zealand. And he wrote this paper only a couple of months ago in November, uh, Mass COVID-19 Vaccination and Excess Mortality, Direct and Indirect Pathways. In the introduction, he makes a few interesting comments. In October 2021, daily COVID deaths worldwide averaged just over 7,000, which is 18% higher than they had been in October 2020, before vaccines were in use. So they were 18% higher than in 2020, in year 21. So when there were vaccines around, there were more deaths. It doesn't make sense. Then he quotes Subramaniam and Kuma, who says, they find higher vaccination rates are not associated with lower rates of new COVID-19 cases in a cross-section of 68 countries. So they find that the higher vaccination rates have had no impact on the COVID-19 cases. You wonder why you're doing vaccination if it has no impact. Going down here, he makes further comments. In the pivotal Pfizer trial, 7% more people died from all causes in the vaccinated group than in the control group at the six month mark. So even in their own trials, Pfizer showed that there were excess deaths. And then uh, John goes on to quote Wallach. They found that for every three deaths prevented by COVID-19 vaccination, two are incurred through side effects. In other words, two people died for every three people saved. That has particular significance for New Zealand because we've had next to no COVID deaths here. I think we've had 50 over uh, a couple of years. So in other words, if this is true, we've had the side effects without the benefits. That must give cause for thought by government officials, I'm, I'm sure, it should at least. And then he goes into the, um, the math, so to speak, and does this a scattered chart um, and does a few sums and comes to this conclusion for the 32 developed and highly vaccinated OECD countries studied, there is no overall correlation between the incidence of COVID-19 vaccination and excess mortality, repeating a non-effect found when studying changes from 2020 to 2021 for the same month of the year. There was no effect of the COVID vaccination program. And he concludes and says, if mass vaccination truly is cutting the COVID-19 death toll, it presumably is increasing deaths elsewhere to yield this aggregate non-effect. In other words, if the COVID vaccines are working, then there's got to be another reason for the null response. Um, but on the other hand, in New Zealand particularly, um, the savings um, could have been because of the lockdown. There was no flu around, so people didn't die. So that could be the upside and not the effect of the um, vaccines because and the downside of course is the side effects of the vaccines themselves um, because there has been an increase in deaths and they need explanations so this is one of my earlier graphs and what I'm going to do now is pull out this part just the nine month part of the graph so um, and you can see you get a graph that looks like that and then if you go to this website you'll find that it's got a graph that looks, what I would say, identical. And that, that's not surprising because we've both used the same data. This is the Human Mortality Database. So you can see here a lot of orange, which is excess mortality, and very little blue, which is the non-excess mortality. And I'm just going to pull out here um, the nine months that I used for my study. That's from week 11 through to week 46 so that's from the 21st of February 
to the 21st of November last year. And you can see from over that period, when you compared the year 2020, there were 2060 excess deaths. Now, there's some blue here too, so you take those deaths away, which is the mortality deficit, and that's about well, 5, 6, 7, 8, 80 in actual fact. So you end up with about 2,000, 1,980 uh, to be precise for this graph, but it's extremely close to my 2,000 figure. So you can say that we're both on the same hymn sheet, so to speak, which is not surprising because we're using the same data. 2,000 extra deaths here during the vaccine rollout period. And the question is, why is this the case? Now we can actually compare it with other years. Um, so that's with 2020 and, and through lockdown, because the lockdown in New Zealand in 2020 was identical, well, pretty close to the lockdown in 2021. So we're comparing apples with apples. But let's compare this apple with a pear, so to speak, 2019. Now, if we compare 2021 with 2019, we get uh, about 1,200 excess deaths and we've got about 400 um, now we've got another 200 take off so it's about a thousand excess deaths which is quite significant but if you compare it with a no um, flu year then you basically double it up to 2000 excess deaths and then what if we uh, compare it with a very low flu year and there was a very low flu year in 2013 so if you compare 2021 with 2013 we, we end up with this 4,277 excess deaths. It's a huge number, double pretty much. And you can see up here, it's all orange, no blue. So there's no bumps that went under the um, excess mortality level. The other thing we can do is to compare the previous year. If we compare 2020, which was a very low flu year, with 2019, we end up with this, a lot of mortality deficit. And that's all the blue here. A little bit of orange, but mostly blue. So we got this um, deficit of 1,119 and you take away the excess, you end up again with about 1,000, which is the same number that I got in my earlier graphs. About 1,000 less deaths during that, the bottom of the bucket, if you remember, of that illustration. It went from 1,000 less deaths to the following year, 2,000 extra deaths for the vaccine rollout. As you can see, most of that is excess mortality. And again, the question is why? I think this research is really important because it tells governments that there's real collateral damage associated with vaccine rollouts. There's no other logical reason why so many people died during the nine months here in New Zealand. Total deaths or causes went up steeply when vaccination started it peaked and then went down when vaccinations rolled off. New Zealand is unique because we have next to no COVID here. So we have clean data and not clouded like overseas. This is of real concern. Our government, in fact, all governments need to consider this. That the vaccines themselves appear to be very dangerous. That they have caused a lot of extra deaths. Please share this video with elected representatives. A full public inquiry is now required. Thank you.